continuous coverage of EMC World 2011. We're here in Vegas. I'm here with my co-host, John Furrier. And uh, we're here with Shijal Patel, who is the president and founder of EMC's Isilon division, or founder of Isilon, is now running EMC's Isilon division. And uh, Sajal, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, glad to be here. Yeah, we had you on back at the, uh, at the mega launch. Uh, you guys, I think, had just closed the deal. And, uh, and uh, so you're in here for a few months now. And uh, so what's it like? Tell us about the, the culture shock that is EMC coming from the startup. Well, it's really interesting. So we are just about uh, four months into our acquisition. The deal closed in December of uh, last year. And it's been really exciting. You know, first and foremost, uh, EMC is in the unique position of being the market share leader in the storage industry. It's the largest storage company and is the broadest distribution footprint that we could have for our products and technology. And the second thing that's really exciting to me is that if you look at what Joe and Pat have been talking about today with the with the, with the journey to the cloud and the assets that EMC has to prosecute on that vision, it's one of the most exciting uh, opportunities, if not the most exciting opportunity that I've seen in IT. And for us to be plugged into it is really uh, exciting. And then, you know, of course, there's always a little bit of adaptation. We were a 500 person company, now a 500 person, but moved to almost 700 people division inside of a much larger company. And, uh, you know, we're adapting well. Joe Joe Tucci talked about the evolution, the waves of disruption, and data domain, green plum, Isilon were highlighted. Obviously, M&A is a big part of that. Um, and you guys, how do you feel about the big data story? Because that you guys are big data. So can you talk about what's going on, your look to in the industry as you know that, I don't want to say big iron, but big file, big uh, infrastructure. Can you talk about what's new with you guys here at EMC World, and what's the big disruption point that, that's going to make that big data cloud work? Well, so I think to answer your question, the first thing that you need to think about is that the nature of enterprise data has changed dramatically over the course of the last decade. So, Islam was founded in January of 2001. At that point, 90% of the data produced in enterprises was block-based, 10% was file. What Joe talked about this morning was that in the next 10 years, 90% of the data is unstructured and it's going to grow 50 times. So, the question is, how do we adapt traditional storage architectures into private cloud architectures and then hybrid cloud architectures that enable you to deal with that avalanche of data? And so for us, you know, this EMC world is really the coming out party for Isilon. This is really our first opportunity to explain the products and technology we have, the scalability of our solution to solve this problem for enterprises. You know, and listening to Tucci this morning talk about the, the, the journey to the private cloud moving to now the intersection of cloud and big data. Um, I was here last year and I think a lot of people in the audience last year saying, oh, private cloud, that's okay. Uh, I'm not really starting that yet, but, and then in the past year they have. Yeah. Um, and I think you had a similar dynamic this year and, and maybe it's even more forward looking where they were hearing terms like big data and I'm getting a sense that they really weren't sure what that meant to them. So maybe we could talk a little bit about what big data means. Well, so you bring up two really interesting points there. So what does big data mean? Big data is essentially unstructured data that has grown to the point where traditional architectures can't meet the needs of the data's scale or requirements from a timeliness perspective or a, a geographic distribution type of perspective. And so a new architecture is needed. And, you know, Isilon's been selling products in the market for eight years now. When we started, this problem was prevalent largely in environments that were vertical niches, things like media and entertainment and film production. And then it eventually became a problem in genetic sequencing and manufacturing and semiconductor. And now we're seeing more and more that every enterprise environment, every Fortune 1000 company, is now struggling with the fact that this unstructured data is growing at a rate that is astounding, and the business is deriving value from that unstructured data. And so now the question is, how can you nurture that environment? How can you effectively scale it so that you can derive value from the information that you're storing? So one of the other attributes of big data is it's, it's, it's dispersed, it's just sort of distributed. Um, do you envision a situation where you know, the software that's going out to all that data and operating on it, let's say in parallel, brings data back into sort of a centralized location or is it going to live out there? How's that going to change what architectures look like in the future? 
so I think that uh, when you think about the architectures to deal with big data, you have to really think about the fact that the data sets are getting so large that it, it really doesn't make sense in many environments to transport them to a central location. So the question then becomes, how do you leverage technologies like virtualization to be able to push applications closer to the data, and as Pat Gelsinger mentioned in his last keynote, really even then go a step further and figure out how applications can marry up directly with storage systems for high bandwidth requirements. And I think that all of those architectures are going to have to be employed to deal with the fact that big data can't be transported to a central repository, operated on, and then results shipped out. It's just inefficient. Sujal, one of the things that's, that inspires me to think about is the innovation um, and you've been an entrepreneur and you've been in the trenches, you've grown your company and now you're in EMC, the big company, but EMC feels like a startup with a lot of little sub pockets of innovation. You got the VCE startup, 900 person startup. You got the Green Plum announcement with Hadoop. You're talking about data and the impact of data to our society is creating a huge entrepreneurial boom. And there's a lot of intrapreneurship within the big companies and there's an ecosystem with open source maturing. What's the opportunity out there for entrepreneurs and for EMCs and companies like EMC to play in that sandbox together? Um, because partnering is a big theme for the company and there are entrepreneurs out there and uh, it's lower barriers to entry to start a company with cloud and big data is like a development environment. And the entrepreneurs and the geeks are really having a frenzy with the opportunity <laughs> of working on huge data scale platforms. So can you share your opinion and view on that? Yeah, so uh, there's two parts of that question that I think are really exciting to touch on. First and foremost, in, in the morning keynote, Joe Tucci touched on the fact that cloud computing is a huge disruptive wave. And that disruptive wave creates opportunity. And there's two types of opportunities here. One is uh, something that I think you mentioned, which is uh, near and dear to my heart, which is this is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to create new businesses that add value for enterprises in ways that couldn't have been conceived of three or four years ago. And it's exciting to be an entrepreneur right now. The cost and the barrier to entry to bringing a new product to market is coming down. The capital is available and the market's very receptive. On the other side, I think one of the most exciting things for EMC's opportunity is that EMC is the, the innovation engine of EMC is the very rare marriage of two major forces. One is that EMC is exceptionally good at buying technologies and companies. They've done it over 60 times with companies like Isilon, Data Domain, and of course VMware, which was an acquisition many years ago. And they're able to integrate those acquisitions together and to knit a very nice strategy around them. But also, EMC is a, stra is a company that has employed a strategy that's enabled you know, pockets of entrepreneurship within the company. And the result of that is things like uh, Project Lightning, which, which Pat Gelsinger introduced just about an hour or two ago. And that's really a, a very rare thing in, in large company IT space, something that certainly is differentiating for EMC. Yeah, so, um you know, you mentioned the acquisitions that EMC has made, a number of them, you know, 60, including VMware, the, probably the greatest acquisition in the history of the IT industry. I mean, I don't know if it remains to be seen. I mean, I think it probably definitively is. There are a couple others that might be up there, but not at that scale. But EMC has done a, a great job of, of d taking those acquisitions, letting them kind of do their own thing, like what they're doing with Isilon now, and then succeeding. Um, with say, for example, data domain appliances. Um, do you see EMC long-term being um, kind of an appliance you know, approach that fills holes and just executes on that? Or can it tie it together as a, as a systems company? What, what, what's your vision tell you there? So Dave, you, you, you ask a really interesting question there. Certainly, EMC could make a really big business I mean, almost what you described was a portfolio of best of breed great products. But I believe that the opportunity that EMC has is much bigger than that. The opportunity to take the companies that we've purchased, the organic projects that we've had that reinvented many of our storage platforms and take all that, 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 that innovation and bring it together into a, a coherent platform and a strategy for customers 
for the next generation of data center and the next generation cloud architecture, I think that opportunity is absolutely in front of us. And it's going to require us to, to bring those, those products together, to really knit them together tightly, but I think we've got that, a great shot at getting that opportunity, uh, really executing on that opportunity. Okay, we're here with uh, Sujal Patel from Isilon. Uh, we have to wrap. Final question, what's the prediction for next year for you uh, within your group? Obviously, um, a lot of things happening around Fusion I.O. and storage is changing, but you mentioned data and cloud. Uh, what's going to happen? Give us a little uh, preview of your vision and execution for this year. So, uh, if you think back to EMC World 2009, I was not here with EMC, but you probably asked somebody that question, and what they would have told you is that the cloud is really big, and guess what? We're here and the cloud is really big. I think mm -hmm. that as you look out one year, I think that there's going to be a few major things that I would highlight. I think that virtualization in the data center has already reached the tipping point and more applications or more, more virtual servers are being deployed than physical servers. I think that you're going to see that for what, we're, what Joe and Pat define as the cloud architecture. We're going to see a tipping point in enterprises where they're thinking about their infrastructure as private and public clouds. They're thinking about this broad shift to a new paradigm. And then I also think, touching on the conversation that we had earlier, that big data environments are going to proliferate throughout enterprises in a broad range of verticals and applications and industry. And I think that when we're here a year from now, we're going to be looking at, at big data and talking about the opportunity and we won't have to struggle to say, oh, in this type of environment, these things are big data. Everyone will intuitively know what big data is and what a problem it is. We're going to see a tsunami of applications, massive amounts of innovation, EMC, big company, good strategy, good acquisition of companies. Thank you. Yours was one of them, a big one. Thank you for coming on board. The Cube.